from a young age, we are taught it's what's inside that counts or that beauty lies from within. I'm here to tell you that's bullshit. <laughs> of course, inner beauty matters, but it's not the only thing. Embracing your inner and outer beauty are equally important. <clears throat> As a six-year-old girl starting kindergarten, I remember the kids looking at me differently. They weren't mean, but they made me feel like an outsider somehow. All I wanted at that point in my life was to fit in. I would do anything to look like the other kids. So I was fitted with prosthetic arms and legs. My legs were kind of like stilts, but with shoes. When I put on my prosthetic legs, it was different. I was the same height as the other kids. I could look at them in the eyes, and I was no longer the shortest one in the class. With my new legs, I had to learn how to walk again. I had to learn how to fall down and not get hurt. I was so desperate to fit in. It didn't work. Kids still didn't want to play with me at recess. This was so frustrating because I believed I was like everyone else. But when people saw me, their first impression was that I wasn't. Now, of course, I was taller when I wore the legs, but this didn't change the way people saw me. I still looked different. I was wearing fake legs. <laughs> this definitely changed the way I saw myself, though. Not only was I trying to fit in, I was actually trying to be a different person. In high school, I had a fun personality, and I was a good person, but I didn't have the confidence that I was attractive. I was awkward, self-conscious, and focused too much on fitting in. Guess how many boyfriends I had? Zero. After high school, I went away to university to study social work. On my first morning in my new home, I woke up early so I could put on my legs and get dressed for the day. As I walked down to the cafeteria, I ran into one of my new friends. He took one look at tall Tally and said, what are you doing wearing those? You don't have to. And that was it. That one statement of acceptance changed my life. I realized I didn't want to be like everyone else after all. I loved who I was, and I wanted to stand out as much as I could. I started coloring my hair bright colors, and I bought new clothes that really accented who I was. I wanted to shine and be noticed. I had found my people, and they love me for who I am. I want you to relive a scene with me. I'm 16, pretty much the same height as I am right now, sitting in a small hotel conference room. With me are five other junior counselors from the War Amps Champ program and a room full of teens. <clears throat> All of us are missing limbs, some their arms, some their legs, and some have no limbs at all. The crowd is buzzing because tonight, it's time for teen talk. Dating, driving, and independence are the hot topics of the night. One of the young girls puts up her little nub and says, I've never had a boyfriend before, and I know it's because I don't have any arms. One of the other junior counselors says to her, don't worry, sweetie. When the right boy gets to know you, he'll see your inner beauty. Then a boy says he had, he's had the same experience with girls. He gets a similar response of, dude, it's what's inside that counts. You'll meet a girl who will get to know you and see how great you are. My blood is boiling. We were actually telling these kids with unique differences that they're not physically attractive and that no one will ever find them physically attractive. Total bullshit. This was not a message I could stand behind. So I chimed in and I told them how I really felt. Beauty 
is letting your differences sparkle. I personally play on the idea that good things come in small packages. Sometimes I even get discounts on pedicures because I only have eight toes. <laughs> I truly love my little nubs, too. In fact, my nickname is Nubs, and I'm known as Nubs all over the world. I'm proud of this. Embracing my nickname Nubs and making jokes about myself helps people around me become comfortable with what makes them uncomfortable. They see that I love myself enough to joke about it, which puts others around me at ease. So much of society is uncomfortable with differences. You see someone who's different from you, and you automatically think they're uncomfortable too. The reality is, you're probably more uncomfortable than they are. One area where we all see, seem to try and hide our flaws is when it comes to dating. If you're like 25% of Canadians, you've tried online dating. You'll know then it's all about creating a great profile that gets you noticed. When I initially set up my profile, the big question was whether to go with a headshot or a full body pic. I chose a headshot. To be honest, I was afraid guys wouldn't message me if they saw that I was missing limbs. I was more comfortable with my body, but I was pretty self-conscious when it came to online dating. A research study by online dating site OkCupid studied what people found attractive in potential mates. It's not what you think. The research showed that women who showed off their unique traits got more messages, more evidence that minimizing your flaws is actually counterproductive. Now, I didn't actually meet my soulmate online. Years later, I met the love of my life at work. Pat is everything I look for in a man. And let me just say, he is not only attracted to my inner beauty. <laughs> inner and outer beauty is something we need to recognize in ourselves and also in others. We all play a huge role in changing the standards of beauty and teaching kids to love themselves and others. Meet my stepkids, Izzy and Nola. It's all about body positivity in our household. I have a bit of a hard time with the little one, though. She's trouble. The first time Nola saw me in a bikini, she looked at my belly and said, you're fat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she wasn't trying to be mean or malicious. I think she was just pointing out an observation. But it still kind of hurt. It was at that point when I realized kids point out the obvious, no matter how it may make the person feel. It's our job to teach her not to judge. Kids are going to look and even stare at what may seem different to them, and that's okay. But it's our job to teach them how to approach this. I want kids to grow up with the idea that everyone is different, and that's what makes the world beautiful. We each have differences. You can't just accept yours. Don't be neutral about it. You have to embrace them, polish them, and make them shine. Remember those prosthetics I told you about that held me back from being myself? Well. I think we all have some sort of prosthetic that's holding us back. Whatever that may be, I want you to leave here today and just let it go. Let your differences sparkle. You are beautiful inside and out. If you love your body and embrace your differences, the world will see you as beautiful. Your confidence trumps all. Confidence is beautiful. Thank you.